So if you've clicked on this video, it's for one of two reasons. You either want to learn about anaphylactic shock and how you can treat it or prevent it, or you want to hear about my story and what I went through when I had my anaphylactic shock. So for that reason, I've put down the timestamps. You can see them up on the screen right now and down in the description box below. Click on the timestamp that you want to watch the most, or if you want, you can watch the whole video, completely up to you. So just for your information, the timestamp is down below. So the first thing to tackle is obviously what is anaphylaxis or anaphylactic shock. And to put it in short terms, anaphylactic shock is basically a severe allergic reaction that can end up being life-threatening and some people even die from it. It can happen within seconds or minutes of when you come into contact with something that you're allergic to, whether you know it or you don't. The most common symptoms that people have reported are difficulty breathing, so shortness of breath, people find it difficult to breathe and uh, usually people end up dying because their airway closes and they end up choking and they die. Other common symptoms include itching, rashes, swelling of the face, or any part that maybe had you had come into contact with if it was something like a bee sting for example a fast heart rate known as tachycardia where your heart is beating really fast and you're sweating some people have reported confusion and other symptoms that may not be common like stomach pain unconsciousness or passing out is also something that can occur if all these things are overwhelming the person and they just can't breathe and they can end up losing consciousness I'm not gonna go into the scientific reasoning of what anaphylactic shock is but in short terms it's basically when an antigen presents itself in your body for the second time because the first time is the exposure second time is when the reaction happens um, basically the antigen connects with the IgE antibody if I'm not mistaken which then binds to the mast cells which then ends up causing the cells to burst and releasing histamines and other mediating factors that can end up causing vasoconstriction that then causes problems with breathing, swelling, etc, etc. You might have noticed that I said histamines and that is the why the medication antihistamines exist because those antihistamines when you have your allergic reactions, you can take the antihistamines and, that, and they reduce the allergic reaction because histamine is one of the mediating factors or one of the main mediating factors that causes these allergic symptoms. So who can get anaphylactic shock? Well, really, I would put them in three main categories. One is people who know they're allergic to something and they end up coming into contact with that something and they end up having a severe allergic reaction. The most common things you hear are people who are allergic to either uh, drugs or the most common thing that I have heard in movies etc as well is peanut allergies. The second group of people are people who don't know they're allergic to something and then they end up coming into contact with that thing and then end up getting the anaphylactic reaction. They could have just had a normal allergic reaction which is not minor but it's less severe but unfortunately they end up getting the anaphylactic shock and that is where I fall in. And the third group of people are the people who are deemed idiopathic anaphylactic shock. This is when they don't necessarily come into contact with an allergen and they just end up getting an anaphylactic shock. So triggers include, but are not limited to things like you've heard of in food, for example, eggs, nuts, shellfish, and medications like um, antibiotics, NSAIDs, which are drugs like aspirin and ibuprofen, to things like insect-related allergies like bee stings and wasp stings, and finally, allergies to things like latex gloves, condoms, etc, etc. So the number one treatment for someone who is having an anaphylactic shock is their EpiPen. You might have heard of this in movies and videos. An EpiPen basically stands for an epinephrine pen or an adrenaline pen. Again, I'm not going to go into the science of it, but all you need to know is that this can save someone's life. So if you are concerned and think that you will ever be in a position where someone might need this, actually you might never know, you will be shopping and someone may collapse and have an anaphylactic shock and you will be the person next to them. If you are interested, look up how to use an EpiPen, watch videos on it, or even better, go to a first aid course and then they'll show you how to do, how to administer an EpiPen and you could end up saving someone's life one day. Second thing to do, of course, is call the ambulance, so make sure you know the ambulance numbers or while you are administering the pen or someone else is doing it, make sure someone is already calling the pen. Keep in mind these things, they mention them in our medical books like step one, step two, step three. Sometimes, yes, you do one, you do the second, you do the third. That doesn't necessarily mean you always do them in order. In situations like this, you're not going to wait to administer the pen and then call the ambulance. 
you administer the pen while also someone else is calling the ambulance. However, if you're in an unfortunate situation where you are the only person there, make sure you administer the pen first and then call the ambulance. The third step is to remove the trigger. So if that person was allergic to peanuts and they put peanuts in their mouth and they had the allergic shock, after you administer the pen, make sure you remove the trigger, so i.e. removing the peanuts from their mouth. Or if they were stung, make sure you remove the stinger from their body. Double check whether in your country it mentions whether you should be removing the trigger first and then administering the EpiPen. However, in the NHS it mentions that you administer the pen first and then remove the trigger. So once again, the information on how to save someone who's having an anaphylactic shock is all down in the description box below. Make sure you read it, send it to people you care about, maybe they will also one day save someone. So how do you prevent an anaphylactic shock? Get tested if you think you have allergies to something. Go to an allergy clinic or go to one of your immunize, immunization centers and tell them that you might have an al allergy to something and then they'll check for you. Did I say A or did I say 1? Anyways, 2 slash B. If you are allergic to something, make sure you avoid that thing at all costs. Um, if you're allergic to food, for example, make sure you always ask about the ingredients whenever you're at the restaurant, etc, etc. And three, if you are allergic and you do get other anaphylactic shocks, make sure your friends or colleagues or whoever you are almost on a daily basis with know that you have an EpiPen with you and what you're allergic to. That way, if the situation ever does occur, they are well prepared to save your life. So basically, that was a short summary about what anaphylactic shocks are. Now I'm going to tell you about what happened to me and how I went through an anaphylactic shock. So this was basically back in 2000 and I think 16, no, this was back in 2014 slash 15, one of those two, I'm not sure. And I was back home in Tanzania. And basically what happened was I had a really bad fever and I had a really bad um, stomach ache and I had diarrhea as well. I don't know what I had actually, but it just wasn't nice. I had a high fever and my mom also had a fever, I remember, because we went to the hospital together. So I remember me and my mom going to the hospital, which is like around 30 second walk from my house and we went there and they took our temperatures and our temperatures were really high they offered to give us an injection to reduce our fever the injection was a declofenac injection which is an NSAID injection my mom got one i got one i come back home shortly after i think within like two minutes i was eating and i didn't really notice anything i was just eating watching youtube and i was taking my plate back to the kitchen where when my dad tells me Habib, your face is swollen. And I say, what? Because I didn't even notice. So I put my hand, I put my plate down, wash my hands, look myself in the mirror, and my face was literally swollen. It wasn't really bad, but it, you could notice my eyes were swollen and my cheeks were getting puffed up. So my dad told me, it looks like you're having an allergic reaction. Go quickly to the hospital. And quickly, I just put on my shoes and ran to the hospital, which, is, which was thankfully so close, under 30 seconds. Got there and the doctor who was my cousin, realized that I was having an anaphylactic shock so they gave me epinephrine but they didn't like stab me they gave me basically a subcutaneous injection I think or was it a layer above that I'm not sure but basically it was an injection that was really painful it really really stung and um, after like a few seconds slash minutes I could feel the swelling go down went back home because you got injected with adrenaline your heart starts racing and beating 100 miles an hour and you're just boom 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 and the worst experience of all this was when the adrenaline is wearing off so you literally feel like you're crashing so i was just on the sofa and i could literally feel my heart rate go from 100 miles an hour to just slowing down and i i'm not sure but i think i read that your heart rate doesn't go from high to perfect it goes high low and then goes back up so i think that's what happened is i went to i stooped really low and i could just feel sluggish and i just did not want to move and i it genuinely felt like i was going to pass out and fall asleep but thankfully i just chilled for a minute or two and then i was back to normal so what i think happened was that Ever since I was growing up, I never ever had NSAID, so I never had ibuprofen, I never had aspirin. For headaches or pain or whatever, I always always had paracetamol. Never in my life did I have NSAIDs. When I was in uni in 2013 to 16, in 2013 I was, living in, I was living in a shared house with six other people and there was this Spanish couple who were living there with me. And one day I had a really bad headache, however, I was out of paracetamol, but they had ibuprofen and they offered it to me. So I was like, you know what, what's the worst that can happen? Because I never had it before. So I took the ibuprofen, headache went away, all cool. 
the next time that I was ever exposed to an NSAID was that injection that day to help me with my fever. So what I'm thinking was that the pills that I took the ibuprofen was the first time I was exposed to the antigen that I'm allergic to. And then the second time I was exposed to it was the reaction that I had, which was the anaphylactic reaction. Sometimes I like to put on a Sherlock hat and think I've cracked the case. However, I'm just speculating at this point, but I think that's what happened. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you drop a like and subscribe to my channel. I'll be posting quite a lot in the coming weeks because of this lockdown that we're in. So make sure you're staying safe and staying home and I'll see you guys next week. Bye-bye.